everyone, this is Mrs Sykes and in today's video we're going to be having a look at how to analyse simple data. I'm going to do a series of these to talk you through some of the different skills that we will need. Today we are looking at a basic bar chart. We're going to be having a look at error bars, we're going to be having a look at how to identify what those error bars might mean and how we can use those to form our conclusions. So, firstly, we're going to have a look at the basic data that we've been given. We have a number of deaths up the left, the control, drug A and drug B. Now, the first thing to talk about is the fact that the deaths are given per 100,000. Now, it's always a good sign that the experiment has been done well when you are giving deaths per 100,000. It's a good experimental design because it allows you to compare some populations, some countries, some areas won't have exactly the same number of people living in that area. However, if deaths are given per 100,000, it means that you can compare the proportion that is taking place in different sized populations. So say, for example, if you were trying to compare how many people were dying of something like coronary heart disease in America, Spain, France and England, you would be able to compare those because you would be looking at numbers per 100,000. Whereas the final population figures of how many deaths took place would perhaps lead you to draw the wrong conclusions. So deaths per 100,000 patients. It's always worthwhile double checking if this is an indicator of how many people have got the disease, how many people have died, or how many people have been cured from it. So just double check that. These three bars are the mean number. So for our control, and in this case that basically means they didn't give them any treatment at all, we're looking at around 100 patients per 100,000 dying. So without any treatment at all, that's the number of patients that we would expect to die. For drug A and for drug B, we're looking at a significant decrease. So both of these drugs look as though that treatment is helping survival. In terms of which one is better, this information doesn't give us everything that we require. This is simply the mean number of people that died per 100,000 that were on that drug. This one is the mean average, and indeed so one is this. It doesn't give us enough information to be able to evaluate the data. However, it's not the only way that we can show the same sort of thing. This is exactly the same data, but it has been added error bars. These error bars can be various different types. It could be standard error, it could be standard deviation. But what it's telling us is the spread of data. Basically, if you have a little error bar, that means that the data is more reliable, that means that the strength of your conclusion is better. Little error bars, good. Bad error bars means that there is a massive variation. There is a lot of difference between the very, very best and the very, very, very worst. Here, this massive error bar is telling me right now that I can be mistrustful of this data. Whereas drug A, with its little error bar, is far more trustworthy data. I can be more confident in any conclusions that I make. The second thing that we need to look at is whether they overlap. And for this, you might want to have a look at getting a ruler and comparing them from there. So for example, I can see on this one here, I've put my ruler along the axis and I'm drawing just a dotted line across so that I can see that it is overlapping with this one here. Obviously, I can then do one in this direction and I know that it's not a problem. Here, we also have an overlap, but it's not as large. If we have overlaps, we cannot be 100% sure that our conclusions are correct. We need to know 
if the data in front of us is statistically significant, i.e. it actually means something, and it didn't just happen that way. So the first thing that we look for is what's the basic trend? Well, these ones had more deaths, these ones went down. So our basic trend is done from means. So from here, without the error bars, we were able to come up with our basic trend. The next thing we look for is do they overlap? Okay. Yes. Yes, they overlap. And this is a significant overlap between drug B and our control. So that means that sometimes when people weren't given any treatment at all, they were more likely to survive than if we gave them drug B which is definitely not something you want to put on your sales pitch. Whereas here, if we compare drug A to the control, drug A always allowed the patients to live longer. So from this data, we can see drug A is better than B because the error bars are smaller, but also drug A is statistically significant. It helps always the patient's in their survival rates. Drug B might cause a better survival rate, therefore a lower deaths per 100,000 patients, but because of the size of the overlap, I cannot be certain. I would say that drug A is, drug B is not statistically significant, and therefore I would suggest that drug B is not used moving forward. So when we are looking at data, we need to have a look whether things overlap or not. So for example here, I've got treatment A, treatment B, and the means. So if you remember, if we were doing a sketch, that would tell us how high the bars would be. And the standard deviations are going to tell us how big those bars are. So for this one, we have a bar that is 0 0.5 up, and a bar that is 0 0.5 down. So what I would normally do when I've got this is I would jot down how those numbers have changed. So we're going to go down to 5.5 and we're going to go up to 6.5. For this one we have a larger error bar. We're going to go up by 1.34 and down by 1.34 and again I would take my 7.2 and I would take that number away and write it here. I would add 1.34 and write it here and see if those numbers are overlapping. And very obviously, those numbers are going to overlap. And because these error bars are overlapping, we cannot be sure if there is a statistically different improvement and which of these two treatments is actually better. From our means, and the fact that the standard deviation is low, it's probably treatment A, but not necessarily. You might see this written in a results table like this as well. This plus or minus tells you that this number can go up by 0.1, so to 1.41, or down by 0.1 to 1.21. So if you ever see in an exam that they've given you these plus or minuses with some numbers, you can anticipate that they're going to be asking you about the effect of overlapping. And don't forget, when they overlap, that's a bad sign, because the data might not be statistically significant.